Uh, good morning, YouTubers. We're going to uh, work on the turn signals of the boat. The turn signals in the bus work fine. And uh, the problem I'm having is when you attach when you attach the cable to it it doesn't like it it gets hateful mm, blinks really fast so well that's a simple fix all you have to do is put in a heavy-duty blinker aha uh -huh. no When I put a heavy duty blinker in and turn the lights on, it blows fuses. Well, your blinker's bad. Your relay's bad. Your blinker, your heavy duty blinker relay. No. I took that out of uh, the Astro van. And it works fine in the Astro van. And it works fine with that connected to it in the Astro van. So there's something flinky here, and I crawled up underneath this, and there's these little blue clip things that's clipping this wiring harness to the harness in the bus. So I'm thinking that it is suspect. So let's see what we got here. Ah, the white is the ground. The brown wire is the, just the running lights. Left turn is yellow right turn is green. Okay, so let's have a look underneath here and see what we can find. Uh, the tools you will need uh, some cardboard to lay on, a uh, soldering gun, some paste, electrical tape, some heat shrink tubing, solder. Let's talk about solder for a minute. This says 60-40 rosin. That means it's 60% lead, 40% tin, and it has a, a rosin core or a uh, acid core. It's for electrical soldering. It's not for pipes and plumbing. Incidentally, you will not find this in your store because uh, uh, the government has made it illegal. Uh, you might find it well, I don't know if they've made it illegal or not because this was made in the US uh, so but it does have a lead warning on it it's really difficult to find in your Walmarts and Lowe's anymore they don't carry it because it has lead in it they have crappy solder which is made out of amalgam or I don't know what uh, but it doesn't stick to wires I'll tell you that so I've, I found this in my welder supply where I go buy bottles of gas uh, for acetylene oxygen and I go buy rods for my stick welder they had this you can also find it at swap meets and such older stuff but that's what you want to solder with soldering is kind of an art and you have to have things right you have to have the right solder you have to have clean connections you have to have enough heat uh, another thing is you're going to need a meter uh, I have this old analog meter uh, thank you Brian uh, uh, he put it together a uh, long, long, long time ago, but it still works flawlessly, and I like it better than, I like it better than my digital ones. Actually, it's a little big, but it's, it's a great meter. Another thing you're going to need if you're living in uh, a warm climate before you crawl underneath your bus is this. unless you want chiggers. If you don't know what chiggers are, they're little bugs and they'll crawl up in you and they'll bite you and it's make you itch and it's horrible, especially around your belt line. Okay, let's get up underneath the bus. Well, here they are. Uh, these little blue clip-on jobs are terrible at the best. And um, so we're going to have to look at that and see exactly how that's connected and uh, 
figure out what's going on here. It looks like we have three wire here also. Mm -hmm. And in the back we have four wire. So you see what's going on there. I don't like that. Let's work with this first. Let's uh, let's get that together first. Let's see what we got here. Well, we got a no fuel lines. It doesn't look like there's a fuel line. Or is there? Is that the gas line? Those are all electrical lines and a um, propane line. So we'll be okay, I think. We can get a little heat around that and stuff. It's not going to hurt anything, I think. Alright, let's take that apart. Something I was just noticing. There's our pigtail for our... Or the end of our wire for our trailer lot wires. And we have, of course, the yellow, and the yellow does match, yeah, that's fine. And we have a brown, and uh, yeah, the brown is the same color. But the green one, the green one they have on this green wire, which is a very dark green wire, almost black. And then they have, uh, they have a white wire too, which is the ground. Uh, and then they have uh, this light green wire that they did not tap into. So it's entirely possible that whoever did this before me just it's got the wrong wire. That might be possible. That might be why she's blowing fuses. Maybe. Probably so. Because those wires sure look... Yeah, they're the right color, you know what I mean? Alright, let's look. Climbed up in the cab and turned on the left, right, and uh, the... the um, uh, the, the parking lights and th this is indeed uh, indeed uh, wired right this light green wire uh, I don't know what it goes to so it, this is they, they do have the correct wire selected from the from the loom so we're gonna fix those and uh, we're gonna go from there and see what we can do but let's repair these first all right, I'm going to sit this down and see if I can't get it where you can see what I have is I have um, the heat, heat shrink tubing uh, going this way. Then I have the wires wrapped together. And I have a little glob of soldering paste right there there and then what you want to do and you have to be careful because you'll burn yourself if you're not you got to get out of the way you're gonna melt some solder you got to get that you got to get that wire hot before she'll take any solder and you just start seeing it creep down the wire and you know you got a good connection See, I don't have a very good wrap right there. So what I'm going to need to do is kind of wrap that a little better. Let's see if I can wrap that a little better. It's going to be hot now. Sometimes when you heat them up, they take and pull apart. Let's see if I can wrap this a little bit better. That wire a little better. It's pretty good, actually. Connection going on right now. Let's go to the back side of this. Slide this heat shrink down so it doesn't get hot and shrink on me. There we go. Now let's do the back side of that. See what we can do here. Let's see if we can get this wire hot. 
going to do is we're going to fold that. There she is right there. That's a pretty good connection right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold that this way. Just like that. There you go. And we're going to push our heat shrink over it if we can. Ah, oh, it's like that. Oh, it's getting wadded up. It kind of got... quite a bit of heat shrink on this so I was able to do this pull it across here like this and get it in there kind of rough working on your bag does not want to go, does it? Let's crimp that a little bit. Let's see if we can, without cutting it in half. <laughs> it's funny, you try to do things right and you, and you, and you just won't go. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> okay, so we can cut this piece off. <laughs> Sometimes this is kind of humorous. You trying to video things and, and it just won't work. Heat up our soldering gun. We're not going to hit her with the tip. We're going to hit it with the side here like this. shrinkability there you go one's good two's better but at least I soldered the joint instead of used instead of using squeeze terminals you know so there you go well I hope you've seen it I put the camera the best way I could. What we'll do is we'll do that one and we'll do these other two. And I'll show you what you do afterwards. See how these wires are tarnished? We take a little steel wool and rub on them. It'll clean them right up. Better to solder. Well that's what you should end up with when you get done kind of neat, neater than those clips that were on there, those were terrible. Uh, so the whole situation with this is those clips may have worked, uh, but that needed fixing to begin with because those little clips are a weak spot. Soldering is always best. Soldering and heat shrink is by far the best. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap each one of these now with electrical tape. Then we're going to wrap them as a bundle. And then we're going to stick them in this loom. And then we're going to put a couple pieces of tape around it to hold it in the loom. There you are. There's our finished product. A um, couple of things I want to do while I'm under here. Uh, I was out camping and I looked under the bus kind of in there is something just dangling and it was these wires uh, looms uh, there is a this one right here 
uh, which is pretty solid and there's some frame stuff that I can go to but this piece right here is a piece of copper and it's going to the hot water heater and it's going to the stove it's a um, pipe for gas so I, I'm gonna I had a few spot ties but I'm going to put a, a few more on it uh, and and make it mo better so let's do that while I'm under here hit these joints of grease two or three shots ought to be enough underneath your your bus and you start seeing all kinds of things that you need to address so you know while you're up underneath here you might as well do it uh, and grease it you can look at stuff too it's exactly how things are holding up underneath here uh, here we go uh, I can look at my carrier. I put a new carrier and new joints in it. I'll have to grease that one too. But I've got to get that. There's a wire down there that's dangling. I'm going to have to spot tie that up. I've got these up, spot tied up pretty good. You can look at that. You can look at your exhaust. See how your exhaust is faring. And uh, some other little things. One thing I wanted to look at. Uh, my hubs are dry on either side so my wheel seals that I put in are not leaking but my pinion is wet the deal about the pinion seal is in order to I'm just gonna feed its habit if it's not too great because the pinion seal in order to take that off you have to take that yoke off and it's when you put it together like this it sets the ring and pinion uh, lash so I don't want to monkey with it right now. It's not leaking too bad. I took the drive shaft out. It's uh, got these star bolts and uh, I didn't like them. You can't tighten them up like you would like to. They should be a cap screw with an Allen, but they're not. They're this goofy star thing and you can't get up in there in order to get to them. I think I have the wrong, probably the wrong tool on there. Uh, so I'm going to put a pair of vice grips on there and see if I can move them any. <laughs> it's, a, it's another winner from General Motors. Penny wise and dollar foolish. While I was under here looking, I've also noticed these. And those look like... Those look dangerous. And it's a, an emissions line and it's a fuel line and uh, they're rubber with some squeeze clamps on them. Well, they once were rubber. They're no longer rubber. It's all ate up. We're gonna have to replace those. I replaced my main line up front that goes from the fuel pump to the carburetor, uh, the hose, uh, so I probably need to address those. That's very dangerous. Gas isn't, isn't it a good thing to uh, to fool around with so we'll have to look at those in another video that's left that's right sorry it's noon the tornado sirens are on and pegging the meter is our taillights all brought to you 
by the white ground wire. So our ground is working. I put a new pigtail on here when when I did I used butt connectors uh, but they seem to be okay so I'm gonna leave that as it is this here is for my ground which is oh my ground is loose oh it's always the ground isn't it it certainly is and the ground is loose too okay so I need to fix that this wire uh, has been cut off from this deal but that's travesty right there that's got to work that ground is loose that's bad that could be my whole problem okay while I'm into this I uh, went down to the salvage yard and I bought two jacks for three dollars a piece and uh, I'm with a couple of wooden blocks I thought about making some jacks but it's so much easier just using those and what they'll do is they'll stabilize your rear end so it's not so bouncy up and down when we're camping that's a good deal for three bucks a piece and I didn't have to make them so got that problem fixed uh, let's fix our ground we uh, tightened that up so now our grind ground wire is good and, good and tight so we shouldn't have a problem now. Um, should be a straight line, everything should be good. Because the side marker lights no longer work, uh, and this is getting old. What do you got here? You got a spider web going on here. This wiring harness kind of is getting old, and uh, I notice I have lost my ground as well. So I've ordered a whole new wiring harness, and uh, uh, lights but I ordered LED lights for it which will take much less energy so it shouldn't hang up the trailer or the, the uh, motorhome at all so we'll get those and we'll put those on too next thing I want to check out is we have a leak a water leak so I have my water line hooked up let's turn on the water And we'll go inside and bleed it. Do the hot water too. Okay, we'll let that bleed off. While it's running pretty good, I want to make sure the drain's not what's leaking. The water was coming out over the wheel well a little bit. Okay, I don't see anything, so I'm going to shut that off. Sometimes the water leak can be behind this because this moves and there's like a little gasket behind it so we'll have a look and we'll look underneath here if I can get these screws out it's a little bit smaller I'll have to come back and get the right size uh, but sometimes it can leak behind the wall and come down in different places okay I've got the screws out I'm looking at my PEX seems to be okay we'll look under the sink at it while it's screwed in place it might because it's changed you know, pushing it in and out it might change too well, the bathroom sink seems to be okay no water underneath there let's 
one under here and have a look if I can. So it's not a lot of hurt in here. Hear it. Hear it? Drip? Drip? So it is my PEX connection right there at the hose. That's where the water's coming in at. Drip, drip, drip. Okay. I'll have to fix that. It's not coming out of that joint. It's coming out of that joint. It's kind of cocked a little bit. So let's take this off in there. I think I've had it off there before. And let's have a look. Let's see if we can fix that before we have to replace anything. That's where our leak is, though. One of them, anyways. Okay, I've uh, pulled this out of there. And what what happens is there's a this goes around that section in there kind of like a little ferrule and when you tighten this up it, it expands this uh, I think this was once made of rubber and it's no longer rubber and it has some cracks in it and stuff I'm gonna go down to the hardware store and see what I can find See if I can't find one of those gizmos. See what I can find. Yeah, it was rubber at one time. But that's what's making it leak. Um, I'll be back. Okay, I couldn't find a, a gasket. Uh, they don't make them anymore. But they do make these. And this is um, what they call a shark bite connection. Uh, that's $8.00. And what you're going to do is we're going to cut that hose off there with a hacksaw. And then this just simply pushes on. Once that pushes on, uh, it will thread. It will thread onto the back of this. I say it will thread on the back of it. Like that. And we use some Teflon tape. So the the line just pushes right into it. It's kind of interesting because it, it pushes in there and it seals and it's done. Uh, I put a T, a new T in mine because it was leaking or it was broken inside uh, and it was just like I just took the lines and just went and it was there. Done. And it didn't leak. It was neat. Okay, let's get going on this. Okay, I cut that off. I really didn't even cut it off very uh, very straight and I didn't deburr it and I just shoved it on there and so it comes to a stop and then you're done and there it is so that's what we got here now you want to be mindful of the way you're wrapping your Teflon tape because if you're going if you look at this right now I would be going in an anti-clockwise, if I was looking at it this way, uh, anti-clockwise fashion to screw that on there. Remember lefty loosey righty tighty. So you have to have your tape so it won't unravel. I have clamped onto the PEX con connection, the shark bite, and uh, I've got a pair of channel locks on that and I'm going to tighten that up and get it good and tight. And uh, I also I put a new O-ring in my for my faucet or for my hose to go on to. Uh, the old O-ring was cracked and broken, so we're going to replace that as well. Those go about a year, and then and then you're done. You need another one in there. Okay, corn tacked. A little leak there. A uh, couple things about uh, this particular setup. It doesn't like le these hateful little O-rings. It likes the flat ones. It kicks the hose kind of sideways and makes it leak. That looks good there. 
It's all right there. Our PEX is not leaking. Okay, we're going to put this together and we'll put a little caulk around it, screw it all back together. Another thing, uh, you have to be careful with that PEX because it gets brittle as it gets older. We're looking for leaks. Okay, the one under here is fixed. Let's look around. And that is exactly what happened under the kitchen sink. What had happened was as I moved uh, one of these lines too far and it fractured a T. So I don't see any leaks and I certainly don't hear anything. So we're going to go camping and look at this. See what happens. Well, uh, thanks for wrenching with me guys. Uh, we fixed our leak uh, inside there. Um, we got some jack stands uh, for the back and we fixed some things underneath including I wanted to fix uh, the uh, pigtail for the boat trailer. So uh, this can be expected when you buy a, a $400 motorhome these things happen so uh, a, a nice little toolkit's good to have too you can put all your hateful tools in here the ones that you don't like uh, and uh, but they will they will serve you well when you're out on the road if you have a, if you have a toolkit uh, thanks for wrenching with me and I think the next video is going to be uh, possibly boat trailer lights or it could be um, family camp out. Don't know. Depends on the mail. All right, guys. See ya.